Esther chapter 9. Now in the twelfth month, twelve being Israel, that is the month Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, thirteen rebellion, after all we've just been reading about, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put into execution, so what has been written, the law in chapter 8, has not been put into order yet. There's still waiting. There's still time. Like I said, it's like, uh, it's like hunting season. There, there's a set date. And nothing can be done until that date is set. Though it was turned to the contrary that the Jews had ruled over them that hated them. And that was a law. Haman signed a law that all the Jews could be killed. King Azahar signed a law that the Jews can defend themselves. They have a right to stand up against their enemies. And the Jews gathered themselves together in cities throughout all the provinces of the King Azahar to lay hand on such as sought their hurt. So those who still, even though the king made a law, those that still tried to kill the, kill the Jews, they laid their hands on them. You're going to have people all the way into eternity who are going to have a mindset to destroy Israel. And no man could withstand them. For the fear of all for, for the fear of all them fell upon all the people. So there's a great fear of what the Jews can do. And Jews in history have shown that this little tiny nation can kick butt. They're still surviving. Well, how many nations since Abram have gone and disappeared into the pages of history? They're a bygone. But here is this little group of people defended by God. And every nation that cursed them is gone. They've been cursed. And how many nations that blessed them are still around? How many nations? They're gone. America is just waiting to get into the electric chair. The day that the electric chair, she plugs it into the wall the day that she turns on Israel. And all the rulers of provinces and the lieutenants and the deputies and the officers of the king helped the Jews. <clears throat> Isn't that interesting? Because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Now are these the people that Jesus speaks about in Matthew, I think it's 25? Are these the nations that helped the Jews? When you were in prison, you, uh, you come visit me when I was sick. You took care of me when I needed stuff. And they're like, when do we do it? They had no idea what they were doing. <clears throat> For Mordecai was great in the king's house. Like I said, if you can find out who Mordecai is going to be in the in the tribulation, who he's a type of. And his fame went throughout his fame went out his fame went out throughout all the provinces for this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. Well he's a type of Joseph. Joseph is the greatest type of Jesus Christ. So after Haman's put down, you can't press a type all the way, because what you're saying is all of a sudden now Mordecai becomes a great type of Jesus Christ. But you can't say Jesus Christ was in the tribulation. Because he's not. He's judging us. I mean, there's quite possibility. I believe, There's one thing for a fact. After the rapture, we're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. During the seven years, the time of Jacob's trouble, is that how long the, the judgment's going to be for the Christians? Seven years? Wouldn't that be interesting? While, while Israel's in tribulation, we're being judged. From the last Christian all the way down to, well, I'm not going to say uh, it would be a long study, but I, well, I'm not to the twelve disciples. I mean, eleven disciples. Judas is gone. But I have a little interesting study about our crowns and all that with Jesus, and I'll get into that some other time. But there's a there is in Revelation chapter twelve. There's a there's a a man child that's born of Israel. 
And a lot of people say that's Jesus Christ. It is not. I'll just throw that stuff out there. I'm not trying to say nothing. I don't know. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies from the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction did that did what they would unto those that hated them. The counter reaction. They did exactly what those enemies wanted to do. They destroyed them. The Jews did the destroying. The United Nations are going to be destroyed. And wouldn't it be just funny? Wouldn't it just be hilarious that God uses the Jew to do it? How about God uses one Jew to destroy the United Nuts? Jesus Christ. He's a Jew. And in Shinshan the palace, the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men. And Parashalath, and Dalmuth, and Aspida, and Portha, and Adela, and Ardithiah, and Parashmeshita, and Arshiel, and Ardiel, and Valajesthia. Those are, I would assume, cities where they were. The ten sons, ten, Gentile. Gee, I read Revelation 13 where the ten heads are ten king, kings. Isn't that an interesting number? Their father, who's a type, the greatest type of Antichrist, has ten sons. And the Antichrist has ten kings, or ten heads, the dragon. That's an interesting little thing. Or ten crowns on, on the dragon, I believe it was. And the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamadiatha, the enemy of the Jews, slew they. Why would they slay Haman's sons? Isn't the scriptures say that, you know, the father shall be put to death for his own sins, not the sons. And the sons shall be put to death for their sins and not the fathers? Well, there's one, one or two causes that you can say this. Number one, they should have turned their father into the law. Or, they were right there with their father all the way. And were guilty. And paid their pay. But on the spoil laid they not their hand. Now, if you run back to chapter 8, verse 11... The law said they could spoil their enemies, but they don't. What's that telling you? If anybody ever tells you the book of Esther that the Jews did this for money, that verse right there says, no, they didn't. They did not do it for a profit because they didn't gather no spoil. They obeyed the law. How many Americans would love for a president to come up with a law like that? With their guns and their ammunition and all that. Let's go kill people. Oh, the American Christians would just love to go do that. But these Jews were under a threat. And God and the king did not give them law just to go kill. They obeyed the law that they killed those that were against them. This wasn't just going a shoot for all. When they had somebody pointing a sword at them, or a, a, a slingshot, or whatever they used back then, the Jew had all right to kill him. But when a person came up to him and said, listen, I want to be your friend, I want to help you out, let's go. All right. They didn't kill that guy. On that day, the number of those that were slain in Shushan, the palace, was brought before the king. He gets the nerf word. And the king said, As to the queen, the Jews have slain and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the palace, and the ten sons of Haman. So 510 men. That's probably an interesting number somewhere. For they had done in the rest of the king's provinces. Now what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee, what is thy request further, and it shall be done. Now, I don't remember Esther asking anything. 
He turns to the queen, right? Here's the report. What do you want? Then said Esther, if it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shinshan to do tomorrow, also according unto this day's decree. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. They weren't done with the enemies. This wasn't a 24-hour war. You got to do it another day. And you take Haman's sons, you put them up in the gallows with their father and say, listen, that's a flag. That's a warning. That's going to happen to you if you go against us. So I don't have any people hung in the Bible. I know Judas hung. I know David's son Absalom hung. I wonder if by chance you got Haman's and his ten sons. There's 11 people there. Jesus hung on the cross. Acts, the book of Acts says he hung on a tree. Cursed he that hangs on a tree, the Bible says. The king's, the king's commandment is so to be done. And the decree was given to Shinshan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. For the Jews that were in Shinshan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day also, of the month Adar, and slew 300 men of Shinshan, but on the prey they laid not their hands. So 810 men have been killed already. 810 men have been found, even though there's a law, 810 men have been found to still go against the law, lawbreakers, but follow Haman's law to kill the Jews. And they did not take the spoil. So it was not done for money. And listen, there's all kinds of jokes out, out there about Jews and money. I mean, one of the jokes is, is how do they make copper wire? Well, they go into a factory, they throw a penny down between two Jews, and they stretch it out. That's how copper wire is made. It shows that this was not done just for the money. This was not done just for recreation. God was in this. On the 13th day of the month Adar, on the 14th day of the same rest of day, and made a day of feasting and gladness. Now some people are like, oh, you know, we kill all these people. Now they're going to party. Now they're going to have a good time. Think about all the idiot things that America does have a party and good time. But the other Jews that were in the king's province gathered themselves together and stood for their lives. Protection. Protection. And had rest from their enemies. And slew of the foe 70 and 5,000. So we got 75,810. That's an interesting number there. You say, well, how interesting is it? I have no idea. But we're told. But they laid not their hands on the prey. On the thirteenth day of the month Adar, and the fourteenth day of the same rest of the day, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Why? Because they're given liberty. They're no more in the gun sites. The enemy can't go after them. Well, they can, but... They can represent themselves by firing back. They are under the king's protection. Well, gee, at one time, what time in the future are the Jews going to be under the king's protection and feasting in gladness? There's a the millennium. You mean to tell me we've been we've been seeing the, the, the results of the tribulation period? Here is a battle that takes place. Maybe Jesus Christ coming back with the saints, and now the battle's over, the Jews are feasting and having a good time under the king. Look at that. You've got the tribulation, you've got the layout of future in Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Yes, they're historical books, but yes, their books are going to happen again. That's how it's laid out. 
But the Jews that were at Shinshan assembled together on the thirteenth day thereof, and on the fourteenth day thereof, on the fifteenth day of the same they rested. Okay. What is the millennium? Day of rest. The seven thousand year, the seventh day that God created. God rested from all his work. There's a millennial rest. And what do you do? And made it a day of feasting and gladness. Made it a day. What's the Bible say? A day in the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years one day. There's a millennium. What are the Jews are going? You want a Jeopardy question? What are the Jews going to do in a, in a millennium? What is partying, feasting, and having a good time? Therefore, the Jews in the villages that dwell in the unwalled towns. You don't need walls. You don't need no protection. Now, if you got Jesus Christ sitting in Jerusalem, and you got the 11 apostles around him, possibly 12 apostles around him, and then you got all the church age saints that suffered with him, only out for. Listen, you want to talk about the United Nations protecting a group of people. How about Jesus Christ, the apostles of the Lamb? How about all the Christian saints that are ruling and have suffered with the Lamb, protecting those group of people? And anybody who goes against the Jew, anybody who goes against the law, you bring him to Jesus Christ and he tells him to go jump in the lake. A fire. How about that? Therefore the Jews of the villages and walled towns made the fourteenth day of the month Adar a day of gladness and feasting and a good day and ascending portions one to another. You know, food, stuff. Maybe there were some that were, you know, didn't have enough. Maybe some didn't have stuff to, to be happy about. It's like back then when they would get out of Egypt. If you don't have a lamb, go to your neighbor. Let your neighbor provide you a lamb. <laughs> And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of King Azahurus, both nigh and far. So here's a letter written just to Jews. To, est to establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and the 15th day of the same yearly. Here's, a ye here's another yearly uh Celebration, a holy day. Some idiot call it a holiday. Because the holidays we celebrate in America are anything but holy. So we just drop the Y and add I. I for me, myself, and me. And the 15th day of the same yearly. As the days within the Jews rested from their enemies the month which was which was turned into them from sorrow to joy from morning unto good day that's the millennium that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another gifts to the poor look at that and Jews undertook to do as they had begun and as Mordecai had written unto them because Haman, the son of Hamadath, the Agadite, the enemy of all the Jews, not just an enemy of Jews. I mean, there are some people out there, they hate, they hate the Jews in New York because they're running all the money. No. Worldwide, every Jew. Every Jew. Adolf Hitler and the Antichrist. Every Jew, all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them, had cast per, that was the cast lot, that is the lot. Remember, he kept on every day casting lots, see, this day, this is the day, this is the day, and to consume them, and to destroy. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon their own head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. When the plot was revealed to the king, 
it switched. And the Jews got victory. The Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined themselves unto them so as it should not fail that they would keep these two days according to their writing and according to their appointed time each year. So here's a new holiday. Holy day. In verse 26, Wherefore they call these days Purim, and they do celebrate that day. Purim means lots. Cast in lots. After the name of Purim. Therefore, for all the words of this letter, and of that which they had seen concerning this matter, and which had come unto them, the Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such, as joined themselves unto them. Those are Gentiles. Those are Gentiles. Hey, I better join you. You know what the Bible says about Gentiles in the, in the millennium? They're going to come up to Jews. Hey, listen. God is with you. Jesus Christ is with you. Let us come with you and worship Jesus in Zion. So as it should not fail that they would keep these two days according to their writings and according to their appointed time every year. So this feast is not ordained by God, it's ordained by Mordecai. And you want to have some fun, ask your typical Jew today that, that celebrate Purim, ask them, see if they really know their history. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation. They still do it today. Every family. And I don't know about that. I don't know if every Jewish family does this. Every province in the world, I don't know, every city, and that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of these of them perish from their seed. What is this thing to remind you? It's to remind you of the Antichrist. Uh, I mean Haman. It's a reminder of the story of Haman, what he wanted to do to the Jews. Now, why would Mordecai do that? Why would the Holy Spirit put that in this book? Why would the Holy Spirit tell all Jews, listen, you're to, you're to memorize this day. You're to do it as a memorial. Because guess what? They're going to find out Esther's not history, Esther's future. And as they remember every single year, as they teach all the children, as the children grow up to adults, and teach their children every year, and when the Antichrist is running about on this world, the lights go on. Wait a minute. This matches a particular story we've been... This seems like the book of Esther. Well, wait a minute. Ezra, they build the, the temple. Uh, Nehemiah, they build the city. Yeah, in this. Oh, wow. There's this guy running around trying to kill us. And I don't see no Yahweh. <laughs> I don't see no Jehovah. We have no Yahweh. We have no Jehovah. But we got this guy running around trying to kill us. Now, who do you think Mordecai is? I have no idea. Israel's going to learn one day in the tribulation. After at least at least after the three and a half years, they're going to learn one day they don't have God. And they're being killed. Haman didn't happen. But the Antichrist is going to. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abihail, and Mordecai the Jew wrote all authority to confirm this second letter of Purim. On the mouth of two or three, it shall be established. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews, to the hundred and twenty and seven provinces of King Azahurus, with the words of peace and truth. 
to confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed. There's a month and there's a day. You don't change it. You don't say Jesus' birthday is on 20, December 25th when it's not. That's changing. I think they still call it Purim. I have to look at a calendar. With words of peace and truth. To confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed. According as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them. And as they decreed for themselves and for their seed, Jewish. The matters of the fastings and their cry. He said, when did that happen? That's when Mordecai found out the writing. That's when Mordecai, That's when Queen Esther sends the robe down to him. Said, Mordecai, cousin, get dressed. You can't do that at the king's gate. He sends the word back to her. She sends word back again. What do we do? He says, listen, you got to go step into the king. She sends word back, but I'm I going to lose my neck. He's like, you better do it or God's going to send the deliverance from somewhere else. She said, the word back, pray and fast for me. And the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim and is written in the book. Esther. <laughs> you got Queen Esther's word on it. Out of the mouth of two or three it shall be established. King Azarus, Queen Esther, and Mordecai. God has sealed Esther. And the Holy Spirit has put it in your, your word of the 66 books. And we've got time, so we'll finish up chapter 10. And the king answered her has laid a tribute upon the land, tax. And upon the isles of the sea. That's a weird expression. Now this is where the type goes off. God's not going to put a tax in the millennium. Okay? This is a, you can't press a type all the way. And all the acts of his power and his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai. Look how Mordecai's lifted up. There's something about Mordecai. Whereunto the king advanced him. Like Joseph. See, you just saw a kid with a with different color coat. Some stupid little story. That's, that's stupid. Some guy gets swallowed by a whale. That's stupid. Heck, let's get a program for the kids in the Sunday school. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Let's have some pizza. Let's let's do what we want to do. And never mind the stories in the Bible, but you run Mordecai back to Joseph and you got a story. You run Jonah back to Jesus Christ or Jesus back to Jonah, you got a story. Scripture with scripture, you got a story. You think David Goliath is just a stupid little story and we're not going to tell the kiddies no more. We're going to do our own little thing. And you know what? You ain't going to learn Bible. Because I'll tell you about David and Goliath and the stone. That Daniel said that there was a stone cut out without hands that killed. Now, I don't understand Mordecai. And somebody who watches this video, or maybe somebody in this room will do a study sometimes and say, Hey, God will give you light and say, That's who Mordecai is. I'm not going to say he's Jesus, but... There are certain points he's a type of Jesus, even, but he's in the tribulation. That's where I stop. Oh, but after Haman rises, I mean, after Haman fails, oh, I see Jesus. You can't press the type all the way. And they, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Medea and Persia? Now, don't go looking for that. God did not inspire that. 
But it will be interesting if they have or have not. I don't know. That they go digging around me and Persia down where Iraq is today. We'll be fine. They find these little potteries. And inside them, there, there, there's rolls and scrolls. And they find Esther. Or they find a story about Mordecai. What a great discovery. No, it's in your Bible. We have proved the Bible. No, the Bible's already been proved. The Bible proved that you were wrong. For Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Asherah. Now, you can't see that to Jesus. Joseph sat second in Pharaoh's house. Pharaoh said to Joseph, listen, only in word are you more authority than me. Now, run those two stories together. What was Joseph's problem? Famine. What was one of the horses that followed the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 5? Famine. What's Mordecai's trouble? Death. What was one of the horses following the Antichrist? Death in hell. Don't you see that? Now, what is it? There's seven horses. To Go find five others. Go find the five other men put in authority, and I bet you they will match each of those horses that show up. The Antichrist is the number one horse. Where Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Asahurus, great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people. Doesn't that what Jesus Christ is going to do? Isn't it all about the Jews? He came on his own, but his own received him not. And speaking peace, the Prince of Peace, to all his seed. Well, who is his seed? John 1, I forget, the, says he came on to his own. His own are the Jews. And what a wonderful way to, to clear up and end this book. How does the end of all things end? There is no picture of Haman at all in chapter 10, is there? You don't read his name. But you read about the Jews, and you read about Jesus Christ, and you read about God. And that's how the book ends. It's all about God, it's all about Jesus Christ, and it's all about peace to his seed, the Jew. While the enemy is cooking in the lake of fire or boiling or broiling, whatever you want to call it. Find me Satan or Lucifer in, in, in Revelation 20 and 21. Find me. Find it for me. I mean 21 22. Excuse me. Find Satan in chapter 21 and 22 of Revelation. You won't. Find me God. He's there. Find me Jesus Christ. He's there. Find me the Jew. It's there. Esther chapter 10 matches Revelation 21 and 22. How do you like that? Now, what's the next book? Job. Job is going to be a type of one in the tribulation period. 42 chapters being his life wrecked havoc by Satan. Now, I don't think Satan stops at chapter 1 and 2 either. As we close there.